welcome to this tutorial brought to you by To The Tick and today's topic is the bullish descending triangle. Bullish descending triangles can be seen in two main areas within market structure, trend continuation and as a reversal. Today we will focus on recognizing the descending triangle, what it looks like, and then how to trade the trend continuation setup. Now this image represents a descending triangle attached to a pole. It is considered bullish or bearish defined by the pole direction. Today we will focus entirely on the bullish descending triangle as a price pattern that potentially leads into a continuation of trend. This is two parts, the pole and the triangle. It's the what comes next that we're looking for to trade. So let's start and look at it unfolding bar by bar in front of us instead of with these nice little images. And the very first thing we have to establish is that we are trading, looking to discuss today a bullish setup, and we need to see this bullish base of support in the background, and the bulls have been trying to get through that resistance line and have failed so far. So that becomes the first order of business. They've got to get enough gusto to get through that line, and then they've got to hold it, and if they do, we have a new breakout and you are watching the formation of your pole, part one. Then we get a nice swing high up here, which is also the tip of your pole, the top. We get our first pull back for a swing low. We get a second effort that fails to get through and go any further in that advance. And then we get a second pullback. The higher and stronger and straighter that pole creation action, the better, both in price and volume. Note it will always have some tilt towards price. Then we get that first couple of bars pulled back. We get that swing high and swing low. And now we're going to be able to draw a trend line based on those swing highs and swing lows, connecting point one, point two and connecting the support side, point one, point two. Now, you'll notice we have established our pattern. We have completed the pole. I cannot stress enough that the pole is key to recognize the potential for a trend continuation setup. It is part one, and it is complete at this point in the picture. So let's focus on part two. Part two is your triangle, and in a trend continuation pattern, it's considered a consolidation or take a breather phase. The bulls have expended a tremendous amount of energy to create that impulsive thrusting breakout move, and now we need a pause. It should feel like a pause. Now note the shape of the triangle. The image that I brought over does not fit exactly within our trend lines that we drew. It's okay. They're going to vary in appearance as well as length, these triangles. The point is, is the structure the same? And what do I mean by the structure? Well, with a descending triangle, the upper resistance line should slope towards, downwards, toward the lower support line that is basically flat. Oh, you might have a tick or two in here, but it's basically equal on the bottom. If it holds that shape, that's what you're looking for in your descending triangle. These lines moving toward each other is called converging or incline toward each other. We have basically range-bound price action and all of it is being squeezed into what's called an apex. Again, it doesn't matter. It can be of different durations, but the triangles, we li really like to see them last a little while longer and yet in a trend continuation, we want them to get in here, and we don't want them to stay very long, and then they want, we want them to get out of here. We want them to get on with it. So the best trades for triangles in general will come with the breakout of this pattern, of your triangle pattern, when it's about 50 to 75% through its formation. That's the best. You really don't want it to have to get it all the way over to the apex because then it's very indecisive about what might come next. So our first target again is for them to prove that they can get through that upper resistance line just like it was down here for our initial bake out in the background. 
Now, aggressive traders will be looking for the bulls to maintain this control on the support line. It is an indication that they have moved from this level of support and they intend to hang on to the breakout. So aggressive traders looking for that trend continuation trade can start trading once they establish the pattern. They can see it with a couple of swings and you'll look for entries along the support line and you'll use a fairly tight stop. If they can't manage the structure, then do you really want the trade? So you can look for that tight stop and again, your first target is get us through that upper orange line here, which is showing us resistance. That has to remain the, uh, the uh, first target. Now, the more conservative approach to trade this, and most technicians are going to only talk about this, they're going to want you to wait for it to actually break through that upper resistance line. Okay, it's a more conservative approach, and there are options in between, obviously. But again, we want it to happen fairly quickly as a trend continuation move, and as we go on and watch the rest of the formation of our pattern here, we want to see them staying in this range-bound formation. And the really cool thing about the triangles is that we can actually use our pattern to help us with our targeting, our objectives, our swing high, to our swing low, we can actually have the widest part of our triangle. Often it'll be their first pullback, but it's wherever your swing low is from your swing high. Also your swing high is your pull tip, don't forget. That widest part of your triangle, we would be looking to take that measurement so it's called a measured move. We'll take that measurement and we're going to add that to the breakout line, wherever that breakout price might be. Right now, I've planted right here because I want it to be within that 50 to 75% range so I get that high odds trade. So again, that's one objective, and it is a little bit more conservative a target. Now, the more aggressive target will say, we think this is a big old bullish trend. We think the bulls are totally maintaining control, and this is maybe just the first leg of something bigger to come. Well, if you think that way, then you're going to be looking for the entire thrusting move that created that big pull in the first place to come over here and get repeated. And you're going to take your measured move, that same measurement, and add it to the apex or that location where the merging is happening between your support and your resistance. You're going to add to that apex and give yourself that bigger second target. So several different ways to trade it. And again, there will be some options along the way as you watch it in its formation. But as we go ahead, what are we looking for? What are we anticipating to have this go on and happen? Well, we're looking for a new surge in both volume and price to go on and get that push through that line. And then we want to see them hold it. We want to see them hold that breakout, and if they do, then we're going to want to run with the bulls in the rest of the pattern. Now, when we say about seeing this break through the line, often you get what's called a throwback, or you can call it a retrace, back to test that energy. Well, different ways to confirm this. Intrabar, you could confirm it once you see it actually push back up through the line and take out that that uh, breakout line's high. You could wait for the bar to close above your orange resistance and or you can use the swing high that created your top and the tip of your pole in the first place and say I'm waiting for you guys to prove you can push through that and hold and then I'm going to look for the move. Obviously the more confirmation you wait for the less you have in the way of targeting potential. So again, we've gone from having a beautiful part one, which is the pole creation. Part two is the formation of the triangle. That completes what we actually see in a bullish descending triangle formation, a picture, a price pattern. And what we have in for, before us now is a full boat bullish continuation trade that has gone on and given us what we were looking for. Thank you very much. In summation, the pole and understanding what creates your pole is key. You need a big thrust in volume and price, and then you want to see that 
pause. You want to see them take that breather, take that pause, consolidate prices in there, look for your triangle shape, which is lower highs as they fall back into basically a flat equal low support line and they hold. Then you want to see your measurement, your apex will be decided from that triangle creation. Once you can get one or two swings together, you can draw your trend lines and you're looking for that apex and or that new breakout to be a brand new push in both volume and price. And again, you can use your target measured moves using your pole plus the apex and the apex will usually be a little lower than the breakout. Again, it's sort of giving you the odds in the favor of the bulls there, a little lower than the breakout. And then, again, the more uh, conservative objective would be to take the triangle swing high to the triangle swing low, wherever it is, and add that to the breakout line. Now, this is the end of our video tutorial offered to you by To The Tick today on the bullish descending triangle, but I wanted to let you know that there are live chart examples like this one. This was a really pretty pattern here. It's a bullish descending triangle. Again, it came from a gap and it didn't have um, the picture quite completed and yet got another one, got another one, and it went right ahead and did a perfect little pattern. So again, we offer live chart examples um, on the website, and our website is tothetick.com edu. Please come and subscribe. We have lots of great educational material, both text, videos, and chart examples, so come join us. Thank you very much.